You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome into my basement bar here on the south side of Chicago. My name is Chris Lanuti, and you are listening to yet another simulated game in a full White Sox simulated season brought to you by Sox in the Basement and Cork and Carry at the Park. Get their delicious food on Grubhub and Cork and Carry at the Park.com. The White Sox were hot this past weekend, taking two out of three from the division rival and current first place Minnesota Twins. But unfortunately, over the last 10 games, they are 500 at 5-5. Five and five. It is not because of the offense. They are fourth in all of the major leagues with a 273 average team-wise. Led by Tim Anderson, Yoan Moncada, and Jose Abreu. The Sox are also tied for third in all of the majors with 89 total runs, trailing only the Angels and the Twins. With 36 doubles, they are third in the majors. And they are also third in the majors with home runs, tied with the Yankees and the Red Sox at 27. So it isn't the offense holding the White Sox back right now. It must be the pitching. They're not at the bottom of the league. They're not at the top. They sit right in the middle. The good news is we've seen a little bit more consistency from pitchers over the last few days. And Dallas Keuchel takes the mound today. So without further ado, let's head out to Kansas City, where the 9-7 White Sox will take on the 5-11 Royals who won the first of the three games set yesterday. Dallas Keuchel takes the mound 2-0 with a 4.86 earned run average. You are listening to a White Sox simulated game in a simulated season found only at Sox in the Basement. Everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SoxInTheBasement.com. Hello everybody and welcome to Kauffman Stadium where the Chicago White Sox at 9-7 take on the 5-11 Kansas City Royals as simulated with MLB The Show 20 as part of a White Sox simulated season each and every game since opening day from Sox in the Basement, found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SoxInTheBasement.com. Danny Duffy takes the mound for his fourth start for Kansas City's 0-2 with a 6.19 earned run average, 21 hits over 16 innings with a whip of 1.63. 14 strikeouts, only five walks. The White Sox saw him earlier in the season and picked up the win against him. They will not have their full lineup out there today. Tim Anderson struggled over the last two days and needed a break. He will rest, and Leori Garcia will lead off instead, playing his position at short. The first pitch on the way is quickly lifted out to left center field gap, and that is a base hit for Garcia. So one pitch and one on. Leori filling in for TA today at short and he motions towards the dugout, let's go. White Sox disappointed in the last two games. I feel like there was a letdown after they got torched in the third game of that twin series. And even though they had won the series, they came into Kansas City yesterday with flat bats and a flat attitude, and they got beat two to one. Luis Robert playing center field is in the two spot as Moncada moved back to four. And we'll get through the entire lineup here in a second for you. It's been jumbled around a little bit to give some rest to some guys that needed it today. Takes the first pitch inside for a strike. Next one is chopped down the third base line. Foul. He's quickly 0-2 with Garcia on first base. Garcia leads. The pitch from the lefty Duffy. Popped to first base. Garcia gets back over to first. And that is the first out of the inning. Jose Abreu now comes up. Third on the team in batting average. Hitting just under 300. He's got four home runs and eight RBI on the season. After him, it'll be Moncada who's on deck. Followed by Encarnacion. And then James McCann, who's behind the plate today, for a slumping Yasmani Grandal. So three guys hit the bench from the regular lineup today. Grandal hits the bench along with Jimenez and Anderson. Anderson was worn out. You could see it. Very lackluster at the plate yesterday. I think the emotion of that twin series got to him. And Grandal is slumping. McCann has been very good off the bench. As Abreu is quickly 0-2 after following this one back. Garcia still over at first base. The White Sox lead the majors with 18 stolen bases, but most of it, 16 of it, has come from Anderson and Robert. This one is chopped to second. This is going to be a 4-6-3 to six to three rack em up double play. So Duffy faces the minimum because of the double play, and that ends the top of the first inning. 
Dallas Keuchel takes the mound. Three starts under his belt and a 2-0 record. ERA of 4.86 with a whip of 1.44. 19 hits over 16 and two-thirds innings. He has 15 strikeouts to five walks. And he's been rock solid. Big efforts out there on the mound. And that's what you expect from a veteran signed in the offseason as a free agent for good money. As Alex Gordon is a leadoff hitter today, lefty against lefty to lead it off. Gordon hitting 308, takes a two-seam fastball just above the knees for a strike. The Sox currently sit in third at nine and seven, even though they have taken two out of three from both the second place Indians and the first place Twins early on in this season. Consistency is the thing we're looking for from a young team coming out of a rebuild. This one is fouled off down the first baseline. It's a long season, and getting off to an above 500 start is at least the beginning of something. Swung on and missed outside slider. He'll go down swinging on three pitches. Keuchel has his first strikeout of the game. Here's the shortstop, Nicky Lopez, in today's game, hitting 111. The pitch on the way. And the lefty lays on a bunt that will go foul before Mancata gets to it. A lot of effort from Mancata on a ball that he probably should have just let roll right off the bat. It would have been worse if he would have been able to get that ball. So two lefties up right away against the lefty Keuchel. Interesting lineup today. The pitch on the way swung on and missed on a two-seam fastball at the knees. 0-2 the count. Keuchel into the wind and the pitch to McCann. Struck him out on a low inside fastball looking. Two batters, two strikeouts for Keuchel. As the waterfalls in the background here just glisten in the setting sun on a Tuesday evening. With two outs, Whit Merrifield comes up. He's struggling early. 197 on the season. He has three home runs. And he has also struggled against the Sox through four games. Cut fastball just misses outside. 1-0. He is 6 for 14, though, lifetime against Keuchel with a double. That's a 429 average. And the third hitter for the Royals awaits the next pitch inside and low, 2-0. Keuchel has been painting the corners early and been effective, but he did miss on those two pitches. And he's behind in the count. Swung on and jam shot down the third baseline into the crowd here at Kauffman Stadium. 2-1 the count. Arizona leads Pittsburgh early, 1-0 as Keuchel delivers. And that's a changeup taken for a strike, 2-2, two two, inner portion of the plate. Count is even. Keuchel into the line, two outs. This one is lifted out into right field. Mazzara underneath it will make the play. One, two, three in the first for Keuchel. After one, no score. It will be Mancada and Carnacion and McCann scheduled here in the second inning. Mancada's hitting 333. Remember that 0 for 15 start? He doesn't remember it. The man now is up at the top of the White Sox in most offensive categories, or close to it. He takes an inside pitch for a strike, 0 and 1. Duffy delivers to the right-handed hitting Mancata. He switch hits, so he's on the right side today against the lefty. That's a ball inside, one and one. Cleveland leads Detroit early in the fourth, already up four to nothing. They are at home. We are on the road against the Royals for game two of this series. The pitch on the way. Swung on and missed a changeup in at the knees. And it was inside. It was not in the strike zone. He went for it. And Mancata's in a hole, one and two, batting in the four spot. He has done well in the four spot. He's actually done well wherever he moves since he got out of that initial slump. And he's called upon today, as a couple guys are out of the lineup, to move down and protect Abreu instead of being protected by him. This one, low and outside, catches the corner, they're going to say. And that's a strikeout looking. Mancata didn't like the call, but he goes back to the dugout. And there's one out here in the top of the second for Edwin Encarnacion, whose average has been plummeting. He's hitting 250 now. Last week, he was up in the 300s. Average moves a lot early on in the season, so you can't panic too much about it. The pitch is outside slider, nowhere close. 1-0 the count. Merrifield, Lopez, and Dozier, the third baseman, are all on one side of the field here in a shift for Encarnacion. The 1-0 pitch swung on and chopped back against the backstop. Angels leading Miami in interleague play today, 3-2. to two. Inside curveball taken for a strike, 1-2 and two the count. Cincinnati beating San Francisco right now in the sixth inning, 7-4. to four. And the Braves up already 5-1 to one on the Mets in the second. The pitch. 
next one is Chap Foul, and the count resets at one and two. Duffy slowing down just a little bit here to Encarnacion, who has been known to go after pitches tailing away with two strikes. He tails inside on this one, Encarnacion up the middle, but because of the shift, the second baseman only has to wait for it, flip it over to first, and there's two outs here on the top of the second. So McCann comes up hitting 313 with a home run, and that was his only RBI on the solo shot the other day. And the White Sox bats have now gone nearly nine innings without a run. And as we said in the pregame, one of the most potent offenses right now in the majors. But they came in flat last night, and they got to get out of that now. The 1-0 pitch checked up, but it's a strike. Outside corner fastball, 1-1 one one the count. The pitch to McCann. This one is sent out into the left center field gap. It's going to be a difficult play as it trails back to the track, but it's hauled in by Alex Gordon over his shoulder, and the inning is over. Midway through to second, no score. So as the White Sox scored in the second inning yesterday and have not scored since, it's been nine innings now, where they have not gotten a run across. That is the longest drought they have had all season long. And Jorge Soler comes up hitting 218 with the big game-breaking home run last night against Lucas Giolito that made it 2-1, to one, and the Royals hung on to win that game. Shift on for him, very much like Encarnacion's, Mendick, Garcia, and Mancada, all on the left side of the field. Keuchel induces a lot of ground balls in the 1-0 pitch to Soler. He's not a ground ball, is sent deep out in the center field. Robert gets back to the track, he'll stand at the wall and leap, and it goes above his glove for a home run. Soler now has two home runs in the last two games. He hits a solo shot here that just clears center field. And the Royals lead one to nothing. And what is with this stupid music they play here in Kaufman? This whole Royal thing like a king arrived because you hit a home run. You got 11 losses so far in the season. You're in last place. Calm down. Man, I want to beat this team today. Hunter Dozier comes in hitting 327. Keuchel now working with a 1-0 deficit. Throws an inside fastball. 0-1 the count. That one just got over. Robert got back quick and waited for it. He timed his leap as best he could. It was just out of his reach. It easily clears his glove by a foot. And I think he was at the max height back there. But he did the best he could. Next time, maybe climb the wall. He had lots of time. I just don't know if you can get up on that wall. It's a little high out in center. This one swung on and missed. 0-2 count now with no outs at the bottom of the second. Inside pitch taken, 1-2. and two. Keiko working sliders and fastballs. The pitch that was hit out was a fastball low in the zone and lifted out of here. Swung on and missed on a two-seamer outside of the zone and low. That's his third strikeout. And there's one out here in the second now. The most dominant performance we've seen from a White Sox pitcher was Dylan Cease the other day against the Minnesota Twins on Friday night where he went seven full without giving up a run and was perfect through three. Otherwise, White Sox pitchers are basically just trying to get quality starts. Two to three runs are being given up in the first six innings. The potent offense has been the reason why the White Sox have a winning record. One and one now the count to Sal Perez. Won a gold glove in 2018 and sat out 2019 due to injury. Suffered late in spring training. The one-one pitch from Keuchel. Chopped foul down the first base line. McCann sets up inside. Keuchel into the line. Way too inside on that slider to get him the bite. Perez takes a ball. Count evens at two. They're underway in Milwaukee now. The Brewers and the Phillies. No score yet. The pitch. Chop foul. Two and two. Keiko delivers. Low. Two seam fastball. He laid off. Three and two. The count goes full to the catcher Perez. With O'Hearn on deck and one out in the bottom of the second. Next offering outside. He takes ball four. Keiko coming into the game. Three strikeouts to every walk. Currently in this game, three strikeouts and one walk. As Ryan O'Hearn comes up, hitting 193 with three home runs and 11 RBIs with one out in the bottom of the second. He had a big hit last night that drove in the first run of the game in the bottom of the second for the Royals. Plating Soler, who has scored all three runs for the Royals so far in this series. Two of them on solo home runs and then being driven in by O'Hearn. That one's low and outside, ball one, 1-0 the count. 
Perez, not a threat to go. The pitch on the way. Chop foul. Geico sets and delivers. That one just misses. Two and one. Folks, I want to tell you real quick about Cork and Carry at the Park. Proud sponsors of Socks in the Basement. You can go to CorkandCarryAtThePark.com direct or go to Grubhub. Use the app. And order some delicious food as this one is chopped up the middle for a base hit. Runners at first and second now with one out. One of the things that I've missed most at the ballpark are nachos. And they do ball yard nachos. Imagine listening to a game here with Socks in the Basement and getting yourself this big pile of nachos with tomatoes, onions, sour cream, cheese, peppers, pulled pork or chicken added on top of that, and it's only eight bucks. That sounds like a meal just for you. And you help out a local business. Mikel Franco steps in, fouls off the first one down the first base line. One out, bottom of the second. He's hitting 321. And Keuchel, with pitch number 30 here, one out in a second, gets that fouled off. 0-2 the count. Three of Keuchel's four outs have been strikeouts. As Franco gives this one a ride down the first base line, foul. 0-2 pitch. Low, he does not chase. 1-2. and two. They are not fooled right now by the outside offerings of one Dallas Keuchel. Perez leads at second. Keuchel checks him and delivers, and he hits him. He's one and two, and he loads the bases, plunking Franco. And Keuchel shakes his head in disgust. He did not want to do that. It's off the back of his front thigh as he tries to come inside on him, and the righty Franco twists around and takes it. And now the bases are loaded with one out here in the bottom of the second. One run already in, and Brett Phillips comes in, hitting 163, lefty against lefty. Like to see a ground ball here to second in the double play. Outside slider, though, and it's 1-0. White Sox defense playing straight up. Garcia is close at short. He's going to be coming home, as will Moncada. Mendick is deep at second base. Swung on and missed on a low changeup. So the defensive alignment right now Mancada's even with the bag. And in front of the bag is the shortstop Garcia, so he's clearly coming home if the ball is grounded to him, the pitch. This one is lifted into the left center field gap. Robert positions himself for the throw home. He will catch it, and here comes Perez. The throw to the plate is offline. A good throw would have gotten him. Robert, with a poor throw into McCann, who had to come up the first base line. He had the ball in his glove before Perez even started to slide, but he was six feet away. And young man, you got to make a better throw out there that was not deep. He would have almost had a better chance if he just flipped it to Garcia and let him throw it home. There's two in now with two outs at the bottom of the second. Runners on first and second. Alex Gordon and the top of the lineup back up here for the Royals. Outside two-seam fastball taken. 1-0. and oh. He's 5 for 27. Lifetime against Keiko. As O'Hearn leads from second. And the pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. One and one the count. Look, Keiko got himself in this situation. There shouldn't have been a runner over on third base. Although a good throw gets that guy. And you got to go and work out on your throws from center field if you're going to be a major league center fielder. And you're going to throw it offline. I have learned one thing in this simulation. At least according to MLB The Show, Luis Robert does not have a good arm from center and is not very accurate with it as well. Every throw in gets cut off or rolls before it hits the pitcher's mound, and most of them are offline. Three and one now the count. Nicky Lopez on deck. First and second, two outs Bob at a second. Sox trailing by two early. Keuchel into the wine and delivers, and that's a strike, three and two. Count is full, McCann sets up outside on the plate, and they get the outside corner for a looking strike three. Keuchel's out of the inning, but the Royals get two. End of two, White Sox trail two to nothing. So far, Danny Duffy has faced the minimum. So the 7-8-9 are up now. Engel playing left field will lead it off, followed by Mazzara, the right fielder, and then Danny Mendick. This one has popped up on the first pitch, caught by O'Hearn, the first baseman. One pitch, one out here in the top of the third. The White Sox come into today's game trailing by a few games now in the American League Central. Kansas City, though, is already down by seven as they are tied with Detroit at the bottom at five and 11. These are the kind of teams you want to jump on early. A lot of people talked about how the April schedule was very easy for the Sox, one of the reasons why it stinks that there is no actual Major League Baseball going on right now. 
As Mazzara steps in, the lefty against the lefty. That's a high four-seam fastball 1-0. and So the rare occurrence which sees Mazzara playing against the lefty starter and a shift is on with the second baseman playing short right field. Shortstop on the second base side. Third baseman's a shortstop. There is nobody at third base. If you could learn how to tap that ball on the third base line all the time, it'd be a single every time they went to the shift. Swings and misses at this one. He's one and two. Duffy's trying to work away on him too. So if he's working away on him with the ball coming to the third base side, all you have to do is tap it. It's going to go oppo. It's going to go down the line there. I feel like most hitters should know how to do this. That one misses two and two. The 213 hitting Mazzara in there right now with one out in the top of the third. Swung on and missed on an outside slider. It was almost as if Duffy was challenging him to hit a ground ball down the third base line. He still couldn't make contact. He goes down swinging. So far, Frank Mankino and the White Sox have unlocked nothing with Nomar Mazzara. And Danny Mendick steps in, hitting 185. But he was all over the place last night. He had one of the few hits the White Sox had. It was a double. And he put himself on base all four times he came up. He had three walks, including a two-out walk in the ninth inning to give the White Sox a chance with a tying run on base. He takes this one outside for a ball, 1-0. and Inside fastball catches the plate, 1-1 and the count. Mendix on base percentage, much better than his average, as he has seen a lot more playing time after not playing very much at all through the first six or seven games of the season. And there are rumblings that the White Sox will soon be promoting Nick Mandrigal from AAA. Swings and misses, two and two the count. Yerman Mercedes would likely be sent down. This three catcher thing is not benefiting Ricky Renteria when he's setting his lineups. And this one goes off of Mendick's shoulder, so he continues to find a way on base, this time hit by a pitch. And he will stroll down the first base, so with two outs, a runner is on. And the lineup flips for Leary Garcia, who's one for one with a single on the first pitch of the game. He's got the average up to 277. He's going to move around the field a lot instead of being in a stable position, but he's going to play most days. Outside four-seam fastball taken for a ball, 1-0. and Duffy, very efficient. He's got two outs here in the third inning, and he's only thrown 31 pitches. The pitch to Garcia. This one's chopped up the middle. It goes off the foot of Duffy. He kicked it into the dirt. He picks it up with his bare hand and gets Garcia at first base. So far in Kansas City, White Sox hitters can't catch a break. They trail midway through the third by two. Kansas City, where White Sox batting averages go to die. It just feels like every bounce is going the wrong way for the White Sox offensively, who came in one of the hottest teams in the majors at the plate and have one run now through 12 innings. Keuchel gets Nicky Lopez to foul that one off, 0-1 the count. Keuchel came into this inning with 42 pitches through three, ran into trouble last inning. The name of the game is to get back on track and give his offense a chance to come back to life. This one's fouled off. Took a ball in the middle there, so it's one and two. Folks, family waterproofing solutions is going to be coming up here in between the third and fourth inning. You're going to hear a quick little spot talking about Ken and Maria, the husband and wife team. Ken's a U.S. Marine as this one is fouled off. The count is two and two. And they're taking your estimates over the phone and video conferencing and very safely helping you out with all of your waterproofing solutions. And currently, there are all kinds of deals for Socks in the Basement listeners. Give them a call and find out all about it. Details coming up here in just moments. Jam shot right to Keuchel on the fly. He will catch this and put away the first batter of the inning. And Whit Merrifield comes up 0 for 1 with a fly out in the first. There's one out in the bottom of the third. Keuchel quickly in the wind, the pitch on the way. Inside fastball call for a strike. The pitch from Keiko. Outside fastball now called for a strike. Two pitches taken, both on the corners, and he's 0-2 to Merrifield. Remember, post-game analysis, wrap-up, box scores, and stats for this simulated season being published daily following the game at SoxOn35th.com. We partnered up with them. They're a longtime Chicago White Sox blog. And we were happy to get that deal done, and we bring you the most virtual, most interactive world we can give you right now during the pandemic. Swing and a miss on the outside corner. Merrifield goes down. He fooled him on an outside pitch, tailing away. There's two outs in the inning. 
Soler steps in, and if I were Keuchel, I'd just hit him in the head. I'm sorry, but come on. This guy, all he does is hit home runs. He flares this one out for a base hit right away on the first pitch. He's got a single. I wouldn't pitch to him at all this series. He's the only guy on both teams hitting the ball. The Royals don't have any offense going either. Both teams dead offensively. There's one guy doing everything. He's got two home runs, and he also scored the other run in the series for the Royals. And the White Sox only have one run so far in this series. I wouldn't pitch to him anymore. Just walk him. This is brutal. The guy's got a magic stick up there. It's like he took the power of all the other players and combined it into his talent. It's like a succubus. Everybody else out here can't hit except for him. Keiko, one and one now to Hunter Dozier after he misses on the first pitch and hits the inside corner on a fastball. One and one the count with two outs, bottom of the third, and the succubus, Jorge Soler, leading off of first base. Nobody else can get a hit except for him. Swung on and missed, one and two. He's affecting the rest of his team with his mythological power. Maybe we can break his spell. Inside pitch misses two and two. If Pedro Serrano were out on this field, we would need a live chicken. The pitch from Keiko misses low below the knees three and two. Sal Perez is on deck, but Keiko wants to get this guy right now. Let's get through this inning, no damage, and get to the fourth. Swung on and chopped right back to the pitcher. Keiko takes a tough bounce and gets it over to first. One to three put out. Two of them were hit right back to Keiko. And after three, the Sox trail two to nothing. Foundation issues not properly handled can be costly. Family Waterproofing Solutions is owned by Ken, a veteran of the United States Marines, and his wife Maria making them a veteran-owned business and a female-owned business that will diagnose and repair wet or leaky basements. And while they're located on the sock side, Family Waterproofing services the entire Chicagoland area and Northwest Indiana. And now after taking time off to ensure they can do things safely and securely for you, Family Waterproofing is back in business and doing jobs. Plus part of the proceeds for every job that they do are donated to veteran and first responder organizations who support our frontline defenders. And currently, Socks in the Basement listeners have access to special pricing when they contact Family Waterproofing Solutions now, 708-330-4466, or visit them today at FamilyBasementWaterproofing.com. There are four hits in this game so far, one for the White Sox, three for the Royals, two of which by Jorge Soler. And Luis Roberts steps in, the righty against the lefty Danny Duffy. And the first pitch is grounded softly to second. Four to three, it goes over for the putout. And there's one out quickly in the top of the fourth inning. Kauffman Stadium, Tuesday night. White Sox, nine and seven on the season, but five and five over the last 10 games. We talked about in the pregame, one of the best offenses so far in the majors to date, but have had a rough time here in Kansas City. They've run into a buzzsaw so far in Kansas City. And this is what happens. Is this one's taken outside by Abreu 1-0. The next pitch on the way. This one is sent down the third base line. Foul. You can't have an offense that scores softball runs each and every day. That's why offense wins games and pitching and defense wins championships. You have to be able to win these low scoring games too. Maybe pitch a shutout or two of your own. The Sox have won so far on the season. Inside pitch taken, two and one. Duffy looks in, the one out pitch on the way. Swung on and sent out into the center field, going back deep to the track. Maybe that will carry, that is gone. And Abreu with the solo shot over the wall at 435 feet, gives the White Sox their first run of the game. Maybe he's wearing a lead vest to ward off the attack of the mystical power of Jorge Soler. That gets out at 106 miles per hour, dead center over the center field wall. And as the sun sets here in Kauffman Stadium to a beautiful pink hue, it is 2-1 Royals. And Juan Mancata steps in 0-for-1. High fastball taken, 1-0 the count. You will run into situations where your team is not hitting on all cylinders at the plate. But you have to find ways to win these games. The pitch. At the knees, call the strike, one and one. Plus, you have a team in the Royals. Look, these pitchers, 
Duffy and Keller yesterday and several of the relief pitchers, they had lots of at-bats against the White Sox. This one swung on and missed one and two by Moncada. A lot of the stats when they show lifetime against a lot of these White Sox players, there's 16 to 30 at-bats. So they get to know these batters. The batters get to know them. Sometimes a guy makes an adjustment and beats you. Check swing, appeal down the first. They're going to say that Mankata held off and an outside pitch at the knees. Two and two, the count goes even. Duffy looks in, the pitch on the way. Checks that one as well. They'll appeal down again, and he did not go. Three and two, the count now. Duffy annoyed on the mound that they're saying Mankata didn't swing at any of those. This pitch, he does swing. Soft roller to third. It's going to be a tough play across. And they will just get Moncada on the slow roller that was almost like a bunt. Yuan almost beat that throw to first base. So it goes 5-3 to three in your scorebook. There's two outs now here in the top of the fourth inning. And Edwin Encarnacion steps up. Duffy trying to just get through this inning with the lead. The bases are clear. The shift is on. O'Hearn's basically playing second. He's right in the middle between first and second base. The other three infielders spread out between second and third. 1-0 pitch on the way. Down the middle, a slider taken, 1-1. One one. The pitch. Outside slider taken, 2-1. Duffy delivers. Inside, four-seam fastball hit the plate. According to the home plate umpire, 2-2 two and two the count. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and chopped foul down the first base line. He dove outside for that one. We've been talking about this now for the last several days. Pitchers are trying to get Encarnacion to reach on the knockout pitch. Tries to get him here on an outside slider, but he does not chase it 3-2. and two. The book on him has to be pitch him low and outside with two strikes because he can't reach it, but he can't lay off it trying to protect. McCann on deck, the pitch on the way. He reaches for one outside the zone and flares this one in the center field on a softly hit ball. It would have been ball four. Somebody get him into a film room and show him this because this is a repeat every single day for the last three or four days with Edwin Encarnacion. Abreu, it's a solo shot. The Sox only trail by one now midway through the fourth. Folks, I want to tell you about me and my buddy Dave. We do Sox in the Basement each and every week. Comes out on Wednesday when you wake up in the morning. 30 minutes for my nine-foot homemade oak bar in my basement on the south side of Chicago. We've done a few live shows in the early morning. I don't know what we're doing yet this week. We're doing that still in between, although we're, we're video conferencing right now because social distancing and all. Sal Perez comes in now to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Dallas Keuchel sitting on 60 pitches, delivers. This one is chopped to Abreu. He'll take it on two hops and step on first. One pitch, one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Now, Dave also has his own business, Westgate Music School. And I want you to go to westgatemusicschool.com right now while you're listening to the game. Because this pitch to O'Hearn is low, taken for a ball 1-0. and And the reason I'd like you to go do that is that right now, if you play a musical instrument, or you're used to and you want to try it again, or you want to try a new instrument, we've got lots of time on our hands. Dave is actually doing his lessons all over the internet right now. And people love it. He sets up, he video chats with you, he teaches you guitar. Well, there's a list of them, okay? Your acoustic, your bass, but they'll do, they do ukulele. There's piano lessons through the school. There's vocal lessons. He's got multiple teachers working for him as this one is flied out to right field. Mazzaro underneath it makes the catch. Two outs, and Franco takes the first pitch low, 1-0 the count. So why not take some music lessons? You have the time, at least some of you do, and it's very affordable. Inside fastball swung on and fouled back, one and one the count. That's Westgate Music School at westgatemusicschool.com. And say hi to Dave. The pitch from Keuchel, outside misses, two and one. Steady stream of two seam fastballs and sliders today from Keuchel. Those have been his main pitches. This one is a cut fastball now. Up and in, fouled back, two and two the count. Franco's hitting 321 as he chops this one back. He got off to a slow start. He's sitting at the bottom of the order, but he's starting to turn it on this year. He chops back another one. Remember, he was a big prospect in the Phillies organization who did not pan out quick enough for a team that had a lot of prospects. Swung on and missed on an inside two-seam fastball, and Keuchel 
is through this inning. After four, two to one Royals with the White Sox coming up. The sun almost down out here now in Kansas City. Pink turning to purple in the sky. And Danny Duffy rolling with the exception of the home run over center field to Jose Abreu. James McCann comes up. He flew out earlier on in the game. He's 0 for 1. Duffy sitting on 50 pitches as he starts the fifth inning. Low curveball, 1 and 0. McCann is 7 for 29 lifetime against Duffy. Like I said, a lot of these players have seen each other. 1-1 one one pitch on the way. It's fouled off 1-2. The next pitch lifted out into left field, tailing back towards the wall that is going to hit the wall. It is a double for McCann standing up. A deep one. And he was lucky about the defensive alignment there too because they were playing him a little shallow, to be honest with you, which I'm surprised about. He has gotten underneath a few pitches and sent them deep. But the book must be that they don't think he's going to do that. No chance for Gordon as he was running full speed back to the wall. It hit on the warning track, bounced off the wall. So McCann on with a leadoff double. And Adam Ingles up with a tying run on second. 0 for 1, popped out in the third. Has been hitting lefties well at a clip over 400. And Duffy the lefty delivers. Inside changeup catches the corner. Ingles shakes his head. I think he thought that was two inside. He may have a case there, but no matter. 0-2 the count, with no outs here in the top of the fifth. McCann leads off of second base, and the pitch is on the way. Swung on and belted into the left center field gap. McCann is going to come around and try to score. The play at the plate, he is safe. And the White Sox tie this game 2-2. Two to two. McCann was off like a shot. He was already almost a third base by the time the ball came down in front of the charging Gordon, who had a head of steam but had to corral that ball in his glove and get a throw off. I don't know if a better throw would have gotten McCann, but he is in there under the tag, sliding feet first. And the White Sox have two runs now over the last two innings, and the bats are starting to wake up a little bit. We have a tie game in Mazzara, the lefty against the lefty Duffy with Engel on first base with a run batted in. And it's one and one after he takes an outside pitch and then fouls the next one back. The pitch from Duffy. Outside, two and one. Mazzara needs to be patient here. There are no outs here in the top of the fifth. Work the count. Low pitch taken for a ball, three and one. That's what you need to do here. You got a pitcher that's given up the lead. You've been struggling yourself. Quickly approaching the Mendoza line. And I'm not saying rising to it. You're falling to it. You got a three one count. Patience here my young Padawan. The pitch on the way. Swung on and belted, base hit. Chopped up the middle. Angle will get into second base right before the ball comes in. He would have been forced out there. He was a little slow on the uptake. Getting there. But it's first and second. There's no outs in the top of the fifth inning. The White Sox have already tied this game. And they have three hits so far in this inning. Danny Mendick steps up with first and second. Some speed on second base, and Mazzaro's no slouch either at first. Mendick, hitting 185, has been getting on base at a torrid clip. He's walked the last three times he didn't get a hit along with a hit by pitch. So actually, he has been on base the last five times. And an inside slider brings it to one and two. And Duffy's trying to attack him because he realizes this guy's more dangerous taking pitches. Let's make him swing. The 1-2 pitch to Mendick. Swung on and missed on an inside four-seam fastball. Mendick goes down for out number one. Duffy stayed in the zone the entire time, basically, with Mendick. Then goes inside, out of the zone, and gets him to come around underneath the ball. So there's one out. Angle on second, leads off, and Larry Garcia takes a four-seam fastball low at the knees for a strike. Duffy attacking and moving a little quicker trying to hold off the White Sox in this inning. Garcia, with the pitch on the way, checks swing one and one. Laid off of an outside fastball, high. The one-one pitch. Swung on and chopped, it hits Duffy in the leg, he will bobble it, and his only play is the first. He will get Garcia, and the runners advance 90 feet. So Engel's on third now, Mazzara on second. 
McCann has already scored. Duffy will be throwing his 70th pitch here as his catcher Perez comes out to talk to him and he walks off the mound and he's looking in at the dugout and he waves them to stay in. Catcher checking on his pitcher, Luis Robert up 0 for 2 and Duffy's like, I'm taking this rookie, I've already taken him twice. Robert needs to make him pay for his arrogance. Inside fastball taken for a strike at the thigh level. 0-1 the count to Robert. The pitch. Swung on and sent back to the backstop. He was in on the hands. 0-2 the count. Duffy attacking. The pitch on the way. Inside and he lays off a close one. 1-2. One and two. He almost went. You could see the hips and Robert coming around. He realized, nope, he's trying to fool me. Something went off a buzzer in his head and he held off on a pitch that I was sure he was going to swing in. I'm pretty sure Duffy thought he was going to swing at as well. Two outs top of the fifth. One-two count to Robert with two on at second and third in a tie ball game. The pitch. Swung on and chopped the third base. It's a slow roller. It's going to be a tough play to get Robert at first. He almost threw it over O'Hearn's head, but he snow cones it and lands back on the bag before Robert can get there. The Sox tie it up but can't get any more across. Midway through the fifth, we're knotted up at two. We have a tie ball game here in the bottom of the fifth after the Royals scored two and the White Sox inched their way back into it and tied it up last inning. Dallas Keuchel to the number nine hitter Phillips. The lefty Keuchel has three left-handed hitters scheduled for him in this lineup right now in the fifth inning. And he's 2-0, and nibbling at the inside then outside corner and not getting the call. 73 pitches at this point for Keiko. He delivers an inside changeup, and he's 3-0 quickly with Alex Gordon on deck. Keiko does not want to give up what he just got, and that's a second chance in this game. The pitch, and he gets that call a strike. 3-1 the count. Keiko delivers, and this one is chopped over to second base. Mendick makes a tough play. He's going to have a hard time getting it over to first in time. He gets one going up the middle. He's unable to get the throw back across his body in time. Gordon was moving. He's safe at first, barely. It's rule the base hit. Mendick did all he could on that one. He was just pulled too much into center field, running hard for that ball. And now Alex Gordon is up. 0 for 2 with a runner on first and a changeup taken for a strike. Heichel checks the runner. Low cut fastball taken for a ball, one and one. Heichel sets and delivers. Low slider, two and one. Dallas Keuchel, through this part of the season, has been the best White Sox pitcher statistically. And he also has two wins in three starts. And it's a battle now for him as this one's fouled off, two and two the count. Keuchel delivers. Outside slider taken for a ball three and two. They're not chasing. They want it in the zone. He's going to have to challenge the hitter here, Gordon, if he's going to get him. The pitch. And he tried to go low and see if he would chase, and he would not, so he walks this batter. And the first two are on here in the fifth inning. And Don Cooper's going to want to come out and talk with his pitcher with the two-hitter, Nicky Lopez, coming up to the plate. The meeting is over. The first pitch is a bunt, pops straight up. Caught by McCann, everybody's gotta stay where they're at. McCann threw the helmet, ran right at Keuchel, who falls out of the way as he makes that play. On the pop-up bunt, the Sox get a favor, and Whit Merrifield comes up, the three-hitter, 0 for 2. The pitch, outside corner, a slider, 0 and 1. Kelvin Herrera, Jimmy Cordero warming. But really, this is Keuchel's inning at this point. They're there in case it gets out of hand. First and second, one out, bomb at a fifth, 0 for the double play ball. Swung on and chopped the second, Mendick. He's going to turn and throw over, back over from Garcia. He is safe at first. It was close. It goes 4-6 on the fielder's choice. And Soler is going to come up, and now the White Sox have to face the hottest hitting player on the Royals in a tie game. And the Sacks are going to intentionally walk Jorge Soler. And why not? He's been killing him. So they're going to walk Soler. 
The bases are loaded, but it puts a force out everywhere. A dangerous move by Renteria, but Dozier is 0 for 2 so far against the Sox. And Keiko will pitch with the bases loaded here in a tie game bomb of the fifth. Swung on and chopped to Mendick. A ground ball, it works out as it's flipped over to Abreu. 4 to 3, and the White Sox are out of the inning. Dallas Keiko pumps his fist. So good strategy. The Sox hold after 5 2 2 game. Jose Abreu, 1 for 2 to the plate in the top of the sixth. Duffy delivers his 74th pitch of the game as Jesse Hahn and Jake Kalish are warming up a righty and a lefty for the Royals. Sox also have Herrera and Cordero tossing in their bullpen. The pitch on the way. Low changeup, 1-1. One and one. Abreu 1-2 one for two with a solo shot. Inside almost hit him on a slider, 2-1. and one. Duffy delivers. Swung on a fastball. He was way out in front of it. So something must have been taken off of it. Or Abreu's timing was off. 2-2 two and two the count. Next pitch, outside corner, call the strike. Abreu doesn't like the call. He's going to stand there and talk to the umpire. He's told to sit down, so he does. One out here in the top of the sixth. Mancata comes up with a strikeout and a ground out in a tie ball game with one out in the top of the sixth inning. Our next opponent, the Texas Rangers, losing for the second straight day right now to the New York Yankees as that's a strike down the middle taken. Although yesterday was a blowout, now it's just 2-1 to one midway through the game. Next one is fouled off on an outside fastball. Duffy continues to work fast, and Mancata continues to have some troubles here in this game. The pitch. Swung on and missed. Three pitches. And he's out. That's the fifth strikeout of the game for Duffy as Encarnacion steps up. And I can say now, confidently, he's in a slump. He is 0 for 2. He had a few moments in that twin series, but when you look at him over the last five or six games... He has had a rough go at it, and he's 3 for 23 lifetime against Duffy, which means not only is he having a rough go at it, but this guy knows how to pitch to him. First pitch outside for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Next one ripped down the third base line, just curving foul near the foul pole. A line shot. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Low taken for a ball, 2-1. and one. Duffy relying more now on the fastball, but moving it around a lot later here in the game. The pitch. Swings and misses at a change. So he's still mixing it up. But like I said, a few more fastballs in this inning and last than he had earlier in the game. After the Sox tied it up, he seemed to get angry. And after he got success with the fastball, he is relying on it. The 2-2 pitch. Low fastball below the knees, 3-2. and two, With McCann on deck. He makes a mistake here with that fastball. Maybe Encarnacion can give it a ride. The pitch. This one is lifted into right field. Tailing back is the right fielder. He will camp underneath it, and Soler will make the catch. And this inning is over. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the sixth, all knotted up at two. Sal Perez comes up. Dallas Keuchel back out here for the sixth inning, sitting on 86 pitches. And he throws a two-seam fastball high and outside for a strike that catches the zone. Herrera and Fry now throwing in the bullpen. Cordero was up for a bit and sat back down. You can't have these guys warm up forever. But they're ready at a moment's notice, I would think, at this point. Case Keiko runs into trouble. Inside slider taken for a strike 0-2 to Perez. The toughest part of the lineup, the White Sox are passed at this point. Especially after they get by Perez here. The 0-2 pitch. Low, he lays off a cut fastball. 1-2 the count. Keuchel delivers. Swung on and missed on a changeup, tailing away out of the zone. That is the seventh strikeout for Dallas Keuchel in a 2-2 tie with one out now in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the lefty O'Hearn comes in, one for two, with the pitch on the way, high and outside to Seamer for a ball. We talked about how Duffy has been going to the fastball a lot late in the game and moving it around. Keuchel is doing the same thing. Duffy's a four-seamer. Keuchel's a two-seamer. He throws that pitch again. This time he catches the zone with a strike, one and one. Steady diet now, a fastball now flipping, 
Now he flips to the changeup. One and two the count on a strike. Now inside two seamer, under the bat, swung on and missed. The eighth strikeout for Keuchel. And like I said, a lot of two seam fastballs right now, but he's getting good location. He's rearing back and letting it fly, and he's challenging the Royals hitters, who really without Soler have had just the same amount of problems as White Sox hitters in this series. And Franco comes up, the third baseman, and chops a changeup outside down the first base line. The righty Franco, hitting over 300, one of the few here on the Royals, faces Keiko for his 96th pitch of the game. This one is chopped into the dugout down the first base line, 0-2. The next pitch, high, two-seam fastball out of the zone, 1-2 and two the count. Keiko, trying to give the White Sox a good, solid sixth inning. He's working quick, the pitch on the way. Chopped to Moncada down the third base line. He dives and knocks it down, but cannot make the play over to first. Official scoring decision is going to be a base hit, as it was a tough chop right down the line. But if he could have come up with that one, it would have been the end of the inning. So Keiko will have to face Brett Phillips, who's one for one. He's got a single and an RBI. He's got a runner on first with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. And he's one and one on him right now. Phillips had a double over the weekend. That was the last hit he had before he got one earlier in this game. There's a reason he's in a nine spot, but Keiko is now two and one against him after an inside pitch misses. The pitch swung on and missed low on a changeup, two and two, he got on the chase. Runner on first, two outs, bottom of the sixth. 2-2 two -two count to the nine hitter. Keiko the starters on 102 pitches right now in a tie to all ball game. Here in Kauffman Stadium, the pitch Popped up down the third base line. It will get out of play. No play on that one. We will reset with the count even. Lefty pitcher to the lefty hitter. Swung on and missed on a changeup tailing away that would have caught the zone anyway. Keiko, with yet another quality start for the White Sox, threw six, tied up at two here in Kansas City. Dallas Keiko gave up a hit, but struck out three in that last inning. As James McCann comes in and immediately lifts one into the left center field gap, tailing back towards the wall. That is going to hit the wall and bounce off. And McCann is his second double of the game on the first pitch of the seventh inning here in the top of the seventh. He is on with another double. And the catcher has got to be excited about what he's been able to do in this game today. And they are going to go to Jesse Hahn now. Nine games. 15 innings, 8.40 earned run average with a 1-2 record. 16 strikeouts to 6 walks. And the relief pitcher comes in with a runner on second here. And Adam Engel now has a righty pitching to him. He has not done well against them. He's 1-2 for two with McCann. He's going to lay down the bunt, trying to sacrifice him over. It is going to go foul down the third base line. 0-1 count, the pitch on the way. A quick bunt here by Engel goes foul. And now he's 0-2, so he's unable to lay down the bunt. And he's down in the hole now, 0-2 to Han. The next pitch is high, taken for a ball, 1-2 the count. The most frustrating thing in the world is not being able to advance a runner with a bunt. He's setting up for it, he just can't get it to go fair. This one is swung on and sent into left center for a base hit! It's bobbled by the center fielder, angle on his way in a second. He's under the throw! He hits a double! So he tries the bunt, it doesn't work. And now he's standing on second base after pleading McCann and the White Sox take the lead here in the top of the seventh with no outs. That's actually gonna go as a single and an error as it goes off the glove, bouncing in. He advances the second on the fielding error. McCann scores, it's three to two White Sox. Mazzaro's up, no outs here in the top of the seventh. And Engel with speed on second base now. First pitch taken high, ball one. So Duffy came out for the seventh, gave up a deep double off the wall in left center field. Engel comes in and tries to advance the runner, can't. So he hits a single with an error and ends up on second and scores the runner. Now Mazzara hits one into right field for a base hit. Engel's going to hold at third, no reason to risk it. You got no outs in this inning. Don't make the first one on the base paths. We are first and third here with no outs in the top of the seventh. And the White Sox putting some hits together to make a run. And are gonna try to get a few more here. Aaron Bummer is up in the pen. He may come in here in the bottom of the seventh as he has some good matchups for lefty pitchers. So you might see him early. Now with the White Sox having the lead, 
it makes sense to bring in the fresh arm. Although Keiko looked very sharp, he is over 100 pitches. Mendick steps in and takes one outside for a ball. 1-0 the count for Danny Mendick, who was 5-for-5 five five reaching base until his last time up. He lifts this one deep into right field. That's going to be enough for Engel. He is sacrificed home on the fly out to right. Mendick gets an RBI. Mazzara holds it first. So Mendick puts it deep enough out into right for Engel to come home. And the White Sox have scratched out two runs here in the top of the seventh and lead 4-2. to two. And the top of the order is up now with one out and a runner on first for Leary Garcia. So Han comes in in relief. Two runs come in, and this one is belted out in the right center field gap. It's going to get over his head. It's going to roll to the wall. We got Mazzara coming around third. The ball's picked up on the track. He's coming home. There will be a play at the plate. He is safe underneath the tag, and that is going to be a triple for Leury Garcia. And the White Sox are up 5-2. to two. The second triple of the season for Garcia as he stands on third base and pumps his fist towards the dugout. A nice gapper in the right center field. The White Sox bats finally awake. One of the best offenses in Major League Baseball this early on in the season could not be held down forever. And that will do it for Han. The White Sox abuse him, and Jake Kalish comes in now for his seventh appearance. 0-2 record, 0-1 in save opportunities, 14 and two-thirds innings with an ERA of 3.07. He's got two strikeouts to every walk, 14 to 7. And Luis Robert comes up with one out in the top of the seventh and a runner on third. If he puts one deep, he gets another RBI. That one's outside for a ball, 1-0. Garcia stands on third base after hitting the triple. Roberts 0 for 3 in this game. Outside taken for a ball, 2-0. Abreu on deck. The Sox continue to try to do more damage. They've scored 3 in this inning. The pitch on the way. Swung on and missed on a four-seamer, 2-1. The lefty, Kalish. High and outside slider, 3-1 now to Robert. The right-handed hitter. Jose's already got a home run in this game. He stands on deck, swinging the stick and waiting for his opportunity. The 3-1 pitch to Robert. Swung on and popped down the first base line. It will get out of play. The count goes full. The rookie looking for something positive in this game. The pitch on the way. Swung on and fouled down the first base line. This time it'll be caught. Merrifield is going to run over there and get it from the second base position as it falls just foul in shallow right field. So he jammed him. Roberts out. 0 for 4 on the day. Abreu comes up with two outs and a runner on third here in the top of the seventh. They're going to intentionally walk Abreu. So both managers have used the intentional walk. He wants Moncada. Look, Moncada's better so far this season hitting the ball, but he has not done well in this series. They're hoping he's not seeing the ball right. Abreu's already hit a home run. Yohan should feel insulted. He's 0 for 3, though, in this game with a strikeout in the 6th, and he's got 1st and 3rd now with 2 outs on the top of the 7th and a chance to do damage. Batting from the right side from the lefty, Kalish, the pitch. Low, forcing fastball, 1 and 0. The feeling must be here with Encarnacion also struggling. Don't give Moncada too much to hit because the guy behind him has been having problems. They did not want to bray you. This pitch is rifled in the right field, tailing away from the right fielder. It's going to be a tough play, but Soler will come down with it, running back towards the foul pole. He will catch this. Hard hit ball, but it goes for naught. But the White Sox get three and lead midway through the seventh. Five to two. Aaron Bummer will come into the game. His eighth appearance, he has seven and two-thirds. Nobody has scored on him. 13 strikeouts to one walk. Righties are hitting 176 against him. Lefties are actually hitting over 300, even though he's a lefty pitcher. He's going to get a dose of lefties and some righties that don't do well against lefties. This inning is set up well for him. He gets the top of the order. Gordon's 0 for 2 today. First pitch outside for a ball. 1-0 the count. Bummer delivers a cut fastball inside. Just missed. He didn't like that call. 2-0 the count. He's been staked a three-run lead after a quality start by Dallas Keuchel. 5-2 ball game. The White Sox originally trailed a 2-0. The pitch. Inside cut fastball. It's 3-0. Nicky Lopez is on deck. And Aaron Bummer, who's only given one free pass 
so far this season, gives a hitter's count of 3-0 to Alex Gordon to lead off the seventh inning. He looks in and delivers. Strike, outside corner, four-seam fastball, 3-1. and one. The pitch. And he does not chase a sinker tailing away, so he walks the first batter, only his second free pass of the season. Not the way you want to start off the seventh inning, as the Twins have opened up a lead in Toronto now, 8-4 late. We've got a game here where Nicky Lopez 0 for 3, hitting under 100 in the two spot today. The lefty against the lefty Bummer. Bummer can't find the plate. It's a low cut fastball out of the zone. He's only thrown one strike now, and he's missing badly. The pitch to Lopez. Inside four seam fastball taken for a strike, one and one. Sometimes a relief pitcher comes in and something just doesn't look right to him. He's got to find it. Aaron Bummer's a good pitcher, though. Signed a big offseason deal. He's going to be here for a long time. The Sox have faith in him. Swung on and missed a sinker. He's 1-2 and two now. He's starting to find it as he attacks Lopez. The pitch on the way. This one is lined to Mancada for an out. Runner has to hold. Nice grab by Yohan Mancada. He didn't have to move. He just stuck the glove up and caught it. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. Swung on and sent out into center field. Robber coming in will make the catch. Chase the runner back. So now there's two outs quickly, the last two pitches. Go for putouts and Soler comes in, two for two. Do you walk him again or do you pitch to him? With two outs in the seventh, Bummer will challenge him. He's got a three run lead. First pitch, foul back on a cut fastball inside, 0 and one. Next pitch, a strike inside, 0 and two. So Bummer's not afraid at this point. 0-2 count out of Soler, you can do a lot of things. Checks the runner at first, not a threat to steal the pitch. Swung on and missed, he took him down on three pitches. So Bummer makes Soler look silly. Comes off the mound, skipping. And the Sox lead after seven, five to two. Edwin Encarnacion will lead off the top of the eighth. Kalish remains in in relief, the lefty for the Royals. Five, two game, Sox lead. Steve Ciszek warms up in the bullpen right now. And an 0-1 pitch to Encarnacion, outside corner misses one and one. Cishik, the lone pitcher in the White Sox bullpen. Bummer did his job. There isn't a real need to bring him out there again. And when you look at who's coming up, a righty is who you'd want on the mound over a lefty. This one is swung on and off the shoulder of Kalish, scooped and thrown out by the second baseman. Encarnacion is out, and there's one out in the top of the eighth inning. And James McCann with two doubles and two runs scored. Hitting two for three, steps in. And with the Grandal slump, may get more playing time right now. I mean, you can't just leave Grandal on the bench, but he's hot. And this one is ripped into the right center field gap, so Lair is going to chase it down. But another hard hit ball that hung up there just a little bit too long. Or he could have had his third double of the game. Two outs now in the top of the eighth as Adam Engel comes up two for three with two singles and two RBIs. The last time up, Drove in McCann on a single and advanced the second on an error in center field. Later scored himself. This pitch is high and outside, 1-0. He did that against a righty, which he has not done very much this year. He gets a lefty now, and he's been eating up lefty pitchers. The 1-0 pitch, swung on, and that is chopped. Big diving play by Hunter Dozier as he dives towards the shortstop side of the bag into the grass and then flips it to first to get angle. We are in the bottom of the eighth now with Steve Ciszek coming in for his eighth appearance. He's 1-0 with eight innings pitched. He doesn't have any earned runs. No runs charged to him. Got nine strikeouts and three walks. He struggled a little bit last time out, but still held the runners from scoring. And Hunter Dozier coming off a nice play over at third is 0 for 3. And the righty stands in against the sidearm pitching righty in Ciszek and the pitch on the way. That's a slider down the middle for a strike. 0-1 the count. Sox lead by three, lost the first of this three-game series, a short road trip before they head right back to Chicago after playing the Royals for three. Sinker over the hand, swung on and missed 0-2. Then they get four against Texas. And then the Royals come to town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. And that's a slider outside and low in the zone, taken for strike three. Ciszek sits down his first opponent in the pitcher versus batter war that has been going on for decades upon decades. 
And Sal Perez steps in. 0 for 2 on the game. The sign for McCann and the pitch on the way. High fastball just misses 1-0. and By Thursday of next week, the White Sox will have already played nine games against the Royals. Six at home and three on the road. So far in the series, it's knotted up at two games apiece going into this game. Sox took the first two on opening weekend and lost the third game of the series. And then lost the first one of this series yesterday. The pitch. Swung on and sent out to center field. Robert trailing back a little bit. Turns around, puts his glove up, can of corn. And there's two outs to the bottom of the eighth inning. Ryan O'Hearn comes up, one for three with a single in the second inning off of Dallas Keuchel. He is three for six in the series with a double. He has an RBI. The pitch. A slider high in the zone for a strike. The Marlins failed to come back in the bottom of the ninth and lost 6-5 to five today. Cincinnati held off the Giants at home 7-6. to six. That one's outside for a ball, 1-1. One one. Next pitch, same spot, sinker, low and outside, 2-1. Two the pitch. That's chopped back, 2-2 two two the count, two outs in the bottom of the eighth. First two batters have gone down for the Royals as they trail by three. Ciszek takes his time and delivers. This one is chopped the first, backhanded play by Abreu. Steps on the bag, and the inning is over. After eight, the White Sox lead it 5-2 here in Kansas City. Alex Colome warms in the pen for the ninth inning, and Nomar Mazara comes to the plate two for three as the Sox hold a three-run lead. Meanwhile, Jake Kalish, who came in to get out of the seventh inning for the Royals, pitched the eighth and only had 14 pitches under his belt. So he's gonna come out here for the top of the ninth with his team down by three. First pitch is a ball, one and oh. Lefty on lefty, the pitch on the way, skied out in the right field, so Lair's gonna move over a little towards center, put the glove up, can a corn, and there's one out. The number nine hitter, Mendick, comes up, and then it'll be Leury Garcia. Mendick's 0 for one, got on with a hit by pitch earlier in this game. Swings at this one and sends it out for a base hit in the center. So Mendick, who got hit by a pitch to get on, and also drove in a run with a sack fly, and that's why he was only 0 for 1, is now 1 for 2 with a single up the middle. And what's funny is, he's only had three official at-bats in this series, and in those official at-bats, he's 2 for 3. He's also walked three times, had a sack fly for an RBI, and been hit by a pitch. A strange line for the number nine hitter and second baseman for the White Sox as Garcia takes a pitch for a strike. Owen won the count with Mendick on first and one out at the top of the ninth. They're going to throw over to check Mendick at first, wondering if the White Sox will try to stretch this lead out some more as Leury stands in waiting for the pitch. And this one is chopped on a third base line, just foul. Did not get over the bag, but it was close. 0-2, and they'll throw back over to Mendick. The Royals convinced he's going to steal a bag. He doesn't have one all year. He's 0 for 1 on attempts. The 2 for 4 hitting Garcia waits for the pitch anxiously. And it's on the way. Swung on and missed the changeup. Three pitches, three strikes. Garcia goes down. There's two outs on the top of the ninth. As Kalish finally gets his first strikeout over two innings now. Complete pitcher innings. And with two outs on the top and a ninth, Robert comes up 0 for 4, trying not to wear the big sombrero 0 for 5 on the day. Takes a four-seam fastball at the letters for a strike. Popped out the seventh. He's only hitting 192 now. He's been streaky. The White Sox trying to keep him in the lineup as much as possible. He may need a day off, though, coming up. No days off here for a while for the Sox. As this one is chopped into center field for a base hit, so he gets off the snide and gets a hit. First and second. Mendick at second, Robert at first, with two outs here in the ninth. And Abreu will get another at bat. He was intentionally walked the last time up. They're not going to do that here. Although if they thought he was dangerous last time with two outs, why don't they think he's dangerous here against the same pitcher? Think about it. Same pitcher, a situation with two on, with two outs in the inning, and this time they're not going to walk him to put a force at every base. He takes that one for a strike, 0-1. Maybe he can do some damage. The pitch. Swung on and fouled down the first base line, 0 and 2 the count. And what's funny is Abreu's hitting under 200 with runners in scoring position. 
He's hitting well in the season, but has not been able to plate very many guys. This one's dribbled a second. A diving stab. It's going to be a close play at first. Thrown from his back. Merrifield gets Abreu laying flat on his back in the outfield grass after he dove into the outfield grass to get that ball and slid. He throws him out. And it's 5-2 White Sox in the bottom of the ninth. Alex Colome will come in to try to save it for the White Sox. Two for three on save attempts over six games. Five and a third innings. 1.69 earned run average. Six strikeouts to five walks. He's got to get that walk number down. You don't want that even with your strikeouts. That's not a good indicator. He's walking a guy in inning right now. It's the first pitch is a cut fastball outside for ball one. He has been shaky on the mound in save appearances. He gave up one already this year. He almost blew it on opening day. The 1-0 pitch. Outside corner misses. Close call. Franco, the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the ninth. He's the eight hitter. The nine hitter is scheduled, and then we get up to the top of the order. But Colome's not doing himself any favors. This one's in the dirt. 3-0 the count. He's got a three-run lead. This is his inning. The pitch on the way. Inside cut fastball taken for a strike. 3-1. and one. Nationals beat Seattle 4-1. to one. That's a final now in Seattle. The pitch. That one is chopped foul. It was a strike. Cut fastball. Lower inside portion of the zone. Colome trying not to let Franco off the hook. Outside cut fastball fouled off. 3-2 and two, the count remains. McCann setting up slightly inside of the plate. And he gets him on a cut fastball. Called strike three. Franco tried to flip the bat and walk down the first like it was a walk. He argues, but the replay shows all of the ball got in the zone there. Colome kind of steps away and looks towards second base and starts laughing so nobody can see him laughing at the argument. Franco goes back and Brett Phillips comes up with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. And he swings at the first pitch, chopped to Mendick. He will make the play 4-3 to three over to Abreu. And there are two outs now here in the bottom of the ninth, and the Royals are down to their last out of the game, trailing 5-2 to two to the Chicago White Sox as Colome goes for the save. And Alex Gordon comes up 0-2 with two walks. The lefty batter against the righty Colome. The pitch on the way. Inside fastball taken for a ball 1-0. Interestingly enough, Gordon is 3-for-6 lifetime against Colome. As this one's outside 2-0. These Royals and these White Sox have seen each other a lot over the years. A lot of the same players in these teams, even though the Sox are coming out of a rebuild, and the Royals are, I guess, in one? I don't know what they're doing. That one's fouled off. Two and two the count now. The pitch on the way. Strike three, and the game is over. Outside fastball catches the corner. He doesn't swing. Colome strikes out two in the ninth. The Royals go down one, two, three, and the White Sox avoid their first three-game losing streak of the season. The most they've done is lose two in a row. That continues as they get this win. And even the series at one, Dallas Keuchel, with a strong game, goes six innings and gives up two runs. He will get the win today as the White Sox have now taken three out of five early on in the season against the Royals. Keuchel's 3-0. and He went six, five hits, three walks, nine strikeouts. Gave up two earned. Colome comes in for a pitch. Colome comes in for an inning. Strikes out two out of three batters that he faces. They go one, two, three. He gets the save. James McCann, two for four today with two doubles and two runs scored. He was the guy that got this team going, this offense. The catcher off the bench, the all-star from last year. Abreu, one for four with the solo shot. Garcia, Leury was two for five with a triple and an RBI and a big moment. And Adam Engel also had a big moment in this game and finished two for four with two RBIs and a run scored. Hard to keep Engel out of the lineup here over the last week or so. The White Sox will go against the Royals in the rubber match tomorrow, trying to take yet another series. They have taken every series they have played in this season except for one. We will see you tomorrow from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. You have been listening to a White Sox simulated game and a White Sox simulated season every day since opening day and until life gets back to some semblance of normal. Brought to you by Cork and Carry at the Park over at 33rd and Princeton. Visit them today at corkandcarryatthepark.com. And also brought to you by us at Socks in the Basement, found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at socksinthebasement.com. Check out the box score at socksin35th.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye, everybody. Socks in the Basement. 
Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always on socksinthebasement.com.